you have to keep your community clean. And this is very important. And also most important part in the beginning, because after you will have more moderators and you can hire someone else and whatever, but at the beginning it's very important to keep this community clean. Discover the potential of decentralized technology and web free for businesses on our podcast. As a professional, if you want to finally understand tokenization, metaverse, cryptocurrency, blockchain, and web free, this is the content for you. My name is Lukasz Szymański from Tokenomia Pro, where we help businesses transition to the web free world. Joining us today is Javier Olivares, founder and CEO of Web3 Sapiens, a marketing agency focused on web free and building communities. And building web free communities will be our topic today. Javier, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Lucas. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me as well. Today, we'll start with a question about your story. So can you tell me how you get involved in the web free space? Well, I guess like everyone at the beginning with Bitcoin, I heard about Bitcoin a long time ago, but the first time that I bought it was on 2017. And there is when I start delving a little bit on, on that. I saw the different trends, I saw uh, CryptoKitties or the NFTs, DAOs, DeFi. So I was always very focusing on these kind of trends. And after I started learning a lot about this in 2020, in the, in the pandemic period, I was also finishing my degree. I have chemistry degree. I'm a chemist. I know it sounds weird because I'm in the marketing field, but yeah, I was studying this. And also I was in that moment helping a lot of business with marketing, with paid ads or websites, SEO, community management. And after that, I was working on Reddit. Very soon I was promoted to an account manager for helping agencies. And most of these agencies were a web three agencies. So I saw my opportunity to mix the knowledge that I have from crypto and Web3 and the marketing side. And that's why I build the Web3 agency that is, that is now. That's great. It seems like really good background and mix of competencies in order to run a Web3 agency. And chemistry field, that's a surprise. That's really yeah. interesting. You can argue though that Web3 marketing is some kind of chemistry job. Like you really need to understand how to put all of the proper components in place in order to create community that will just work and grow. And this is my next question. So what do you believe are the key components of a successful web free community? First of all, when you create a community, you have to focus on having a passionate people about what you are doing, people who are sharing your thoughts, your goals, your mission, your vision. Also, you have to be transparent. Everyone knows if you are just buying followers or if you are, if you are having a real community. We pass by many scams, so people are really aware about it. So if you are starting getting a small community, but real ones that will become your members, have a solid foundation, the whole community will grow after. You have to understand that they are members, that they are investors, they are users, and they are part of your team. So they will make your project better. So just focus on create a good environment from the beginning, transparency and passionate people who love exactly what you are doing. I think you've touched the most important points, especially that they are connected to web free values really directly. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that our podcast is directed mainly to businesses that would like to start their journey in web free world. So from their perspective, for businesses that are new to the ecosystem, how would you approach community building in the web free space? For people that are new in this business, we can understand that maybe they are in the web two who wants to move to the web three, right? So they already have an audience in the web two and they are starting now in the business. So we have to understand that you will probably at the beginning have the separated audience, the people from the web two and people like native ones from the web three. So if you already have an audience, for example, let's imagine you have an audience on Instagram, you should try to move them to a web three environment, for example, using Discord. So at the beginning, it's, it's true that you're going to divide your efforts and your time on these two things, but it's the only way you can do that for now, because there are a lot of barriers until we have a native platform that every, everyone is comfortable using. So to start. As I said at the beginning, being completely transparent with them, sharing your vision, try to move them to Discord. If you don't know exactly how to talk and have this crypto language, everyone knows that we talk with GM or Wacky Me or D or these kind of things, right? So 
if you don't have this knowledge, you have to find someone who knows how to talk about that. And in, in this way, try to get these first fans who love your product, try to give them from the very beginning a special treatment, okay, like a, an NFT or a different role in Discord. Try to listen to them because they will tell you exactly what they want to go. And very important to have to understand that the first members are the ones who are going to lead the community for you in the future. They will answer the questions for the new ones. They will teach the new ones or they are going to reduce a lot your effort on teaching the others. So having this solid base and the platforms that you should use at the beginning, in my perspective, Discord is the best one, is the better option. But if you have more time and you want to divide your effort besides the web two platforms like Instagram, for example, Twitter is the best one. And after this, I would recommend Telegram and for sure Reddit. That is where I'm specialized. Yeah, exactly. That was my next question about what are the possible platforms and social media channels everyone should consider for acquiring and then growing the community. And you've already explained that well, dividing by Web2 and Web3. So from Web3, for sure, like the Discord is the place to be and Twitter is the place to be. However, both of them are serving different purpose. And you've mentioned Reddit. Reddit, that is one of your focus point and your area of expertise because of your background. So let's maybe talk about Reddit a little bit. So what role does Reddit play in web free community building and why do you think it is an important platform for businesses to focus on? Well, Reddit is a social media platform where you can find a lot of communities of passionate people. There are 130,000 active communities. And what they did at the beginning, they saw the trend and they saw what was coming and they did a very good move, including the Reddit avatars in a way that people that is not involved in the Web3 world, they didn't know they were NFTs. So at the end, they get to, they achieve this goal of getting a lot of active wallets. Everyone knows the story. They get more wallets than OpenSea. And with this amazing move, they remove a lot of barriers that we have now for the, these two spaces, the Web2 and the Web3. So in my perspective, they will continue with this direction. I think everyone and every Web3 project should have a presence there. You've mentioned this loud case, really famous case of Reddit doing just one simple trick, which is yeah. basically working on proper framing instead of NFTs. As far as I remember, it was about digital collectibles. Is that right? Uh -huh. exactly. yeah. yeah. And authors, yeah. there was like huge spike in number of wallets, which was really great example of how you can still onboard people in web free without all of these unnecessary negative emotions sometimes that communities tend to have around the topic. At the end of the day, there is this discussion <clears throat> about further adoption of web free, where if you think about it, also comparing to web two, most of the people don't really know what's behind the web two stack. Right. So why they should even care in terms of web free. So this is showing that without maybe too explicit communication that, hey, this is blockchain, this is NFT, this is whatsoever, it could be easier to bring more adoption to the space while still providing the values that this space is uh, providing. So let's go back to the Reddit and you've mentioned about the role of Reddit. So if I am a business and I would like to build a community on Reddit, can you walk us through the process of building such a community from start to finish? What will be the steps? In my NC, we created a, a great guide, like going step by step to give you an overview exactly of the first step that you should start following. When you create this about Reddit, first of all, having a catchy name, okay establish some guidelines and have a moderating team. You can also reach some big moderators who can help you to promote the subreddit and give you also valuable ideas. The guidelines start with more flexible approach to encourage the interaction. And then you can maybe start gradually adding more rules, but from the beginning it's better to be more, more flexible. The second thing you have to do is to analyze the competitors, research with other subreddits with similar purpose and ask yourself what you can provide to the users that are subscribing to the subreddits, why they will have to 
join to your subreddit and not to, to the other, right? Or what are you giving to them? I'm providing a few links they can check where they can, in this case, compare different subreddits. Reddit sometimes works like a search engine. People, when they search something in Google, they at the end, they add the Reddit word to see a post or a comment or something on Reddit so they can check. So it's important also to use these kind of keywords. Then you can start with a small group. I recommend to buy followers, but at the beginning, if you want to buy, okay, don't buy more than 100 because everyone knows that they are fake followers. It can help you to, to get more followers at the beginning, but please not more than that. And be aware with the scans with this. Be very careful with that. Then start creating the posts and comments. You have to analyze exactly the kind of content that you want to provide them. Value content. Please don't try always to sell your product or to sell your service. Try to give them content so they can engage and they, and they can learn about it. Next, you have to understand the timing. So when you're analyzing the different subreddits, you will see what is the best moment to post. You can post in your community and then repost your content, like the cross spot to another subreddit to have more impressions and bring people there. You can also identify different possible red influencers. Sometimes it's difficult to find them, but if you find them, they are, they are cheap and they are highly appreciated in the community. It's a very good tip. Think about the consistency. I saw many people trying to create community on Reddit or even with Reddit ads. I think in a short term, Reddit is a long-term platform. Karma and the age of the user and the subreddit is also very important. So please keep this consistency. Another tip will be try to develop your own language. We see how a lot of subreddits, they have their own way to talk. For example, if you check meme economy, every time that they want to post something in the headline, they add invest in. So it's a way to identify and connect with post related with the subreddit. And it also adds a playful aspect that only members will understand. So it's very interesting. And also the feedback for the members always ask, always listen, because they will tell you exactly the way that they want the subreddit to go for the next months. Final thing, Reddit ads is very powerful, but it's, I can understand sometimes it's complicated to use because it's not like Facebook or Twitter or other platforms. It's more a long term. So you have to think and the funnel that you are doing at the end of the conversion this funnel, usually the consideration phase is bigger than the others. So that's why many people at the end stop using Reddit ads because it doesn't work, but you have to know how to use it. We are also going to create another guide for Reddit ads so people can check. So basically that, just download the PDF and you will have all the information here to start doing the, your own community there. Thank you very much. You've mentioned about the karma and for listeners, karma related to account on Reddit is something like reputation points. And the one challenge that I could see regarding creating community on Reddit is when business doesn't have any account with any history and you are just starting from scratch. So probably you are not getting so much exposure as other accounts with higher karma. How we can overcome this obstacle in starting from scratch? Is it even possible to actually really build organically the audience on Reddit without having uh, already a history on the account? Yeah, for sure you can, but at the beginning it's complicated because you cannot post in certain subreddits. At the end, when you are posting something, everyone knows that you are trying to promote something. And if you don't have enough karma, they will see like a spam. So in that case, I will highly recommend to start. You can start also with the username, but with your new profile but try to reach people, moderators, or people with enough karma to post and to create content about you. If you reach five, six, 10 people, all of them talking about this, they are cheap. You can also, for example, in my agency, we have different users we can use with enough karma for different projects. So in my case, I can use them, but if you don't have this possibility or you don't want to contact me, you can just contact people on Reddit and tell them if they're interested in your project and I start creating contact with them. This is how I would start. So we've mentioned about one of the challenges regarding building community by the businesses. Let's talk about the other challenges. So what are some of the biggest challenges businesses face when building a web-free community and how you think we can overcome them? For me, the biggest challenge now, uh, nowadays, is that we have a lot of distractions and keep the users engaged is very com complicated. 
because at the end, how many projects you can be involved with, like really involved, maybe one, two, maybe three. So yeah, you can follow a lot of projects, but at the end, you know exactly what's going on and vote and give ideas at the end is complicated. You have to understand that they are not just followers. They have to participate on your project. You have to do announcements, game, polls, contests. You have to open discussions. So that's a lot of time and effort. And it's not the same if you are doing in Web2 because in Web2 is more or less just doing announcement. But in Web3, it's more long-term. You have to engage with them. So the most challenging part is to keep them active and interested in a long term. That's a point where I think everyone struggles with, which is you are competing for people's time. That will be the biggest challenge in my mind, because as you mentioned, you can be on the Discord, you can be on like dozens of Discord channels, but at the end of the day, you are really engaged in up to three max projects because you just don't have enough time. And frequently you can see these waves of new community coming in into your channel because, for example, you started to do some campaign, but then most of them, unfortunately, they are just staying there for the effects of the campaign. We did some airdrop and then they are just there to claim the airdrop and they are going away. And this is one thing that I would also like to add, uh, just another tip. If you are focusing your community on airdrops and rewards and the price token, to token price and the floor price of the NFT is not a good community. It's not about the numbers, it's not about, it's also about the quality of them. So there is two ways to interpret the quality of your audience. The more abstract one is what they are talking about. Do you have deep conversations with them? All of the channels that you have are active or not? Do you have spam? They are just talking about the price and when to the moon. This is basically the kind of topics they talk, talk about. That's the point. That's the key where you have to focus on. One pattern that I'm observing is projects creating different channels for the price discussions. So they don't mm -hmm. want these price discussions on general channels. They want to forward it to specific channel. Okay, guys, you want to talk about the prices. You want to talk about technical analysis of our chart. That's great. We are not going to, you know, to exclude you. This is the place for this discussion. This is the separate channel. Please don't come with that on the general channel because we want to talk here more about the development of the project, not about speculative price of, of our asset, right? This is at least what I can see on different Discord servers. Yeah, totally agree. And you've mentioned one interesting thing, which is the one way how we can measure the quality of our community. This is exactly my next question around how do you measure the success of web free community and what metrics should the businesses be paying attention to? I think it's important question because if we are talking about web two businesses that are willing to go into web free space, most of them, they are thinking through metrics. They do have metrics in their head and they are trying to understand how they can quantify their success and how they can approach some projects in order to, at the end of the day, say, okay, this project was successful. So what's your take on that? Besides this abstract way to think about the community and the quality and what they are talking and the things that we already spoke about, for some specific metrics or KPIs, besides the number, that yes, is important, but for me, it's more important engagement rate that you have with them. If you post a tweet, how many likes do you have? How many retweets, how many comments and the quality of the comments? Or if you create a poll, how many votes do you have? Or if you, for example, create a Twitter space to talk or to discuss things or really talks or Discord lives, how many people are there really engaging and talking and discussing? This is the kind of metrics, the numbers that you have to pay attention to. From what I hear, the most important set of metrics that you would recommend is focusing on engagement. Mm -hmm. So all of the metrics related to engagement. This is the field where you can really prove that you have real community. And we've talked about acquiring community through, for example, Reddit or different channels. We talk about right now engagement. So let's think about the next phase, which is, okay, we've set up the community. We started to engage them. And now what are some best practices from your experience in terms of scaling a web free community over time. The first recommendation when you have this solid foundation, this solid base of good users, they are passionate about what you're talking, 
they are really engaging with you, you have 100, 1,000, but real ones, then the sad part, let's say, you have to invest on marketing, probably. You have to, at the end, if you have an amazing project, but no one's known about it, obviously you will grow, but to scale it faster, at the end, you have to invest on marketing. Mm -hmm. So doing some partnership with people, with another communities could be cheaper. But besides that, start doing different promotions or, for example, press releases, using some influencers that can help you, influencers with the same vision as you, for sure, that can have the same target audience, paid ads. So if you have a good community, it will reduce a lot of your marketing efforts. But at the end, the marketing part is something that is very important. I saw a lot of NFT collections that were sold just with marketing and no community. Obviously, this is not what we want. Mm -hmm. but because it's not a long-term project, but marketing is essential. Let's maybe think about examples. Can you give us some examples of successful web-free communities? How do you think? What made them successful? For example, if we talk about NFT communities, so yeah, if we talk about Body Judge Club, they were very important ecosystem. They were pioneers doing the, for example, when they introduced the Serum or when they create the Ape token, they are introducing things besides being pioneers, but they are introducing things for the community. So if you're seeing they are giving them as much as they can, giving more and over deliver instead of over promising, for example. After this, influencers for them is very important. For example, Jade's club, they had people like Justin Bieber or Snoop Dogg, or if you go to Doodles, they had a Steve Oki. So this is another leak that many people cannot reach. But if, for example, we think in another, also big, but Atsuki, it was a community related with manga, video games, metaverse. So they were targeting people who were really in love with this. So as you see, if you engage and you create a community based on a specific thing, people who love this, like a subreddit, people who love this, it's going to be easier. And if I can give you more examples, small ones, for example, in Spain, they are not so known in, in the rest of the world, but in Spain, there are two brands, one is Shrax and the other one is... Uh, not solo on JPG, which means it's not just a JPEG. And they are clear examples of brands who create an NFT collection and that they are giving exclusive access and giving discounts. And it's something that everyone can do. Every brand can do that, create an NFT collection, create a token and start giving things. Like Starbucks, for example, amazing brand, they are doing an NFT collection for the coffee lovers. So as you see the engagement, the passion people, I think the mass adoption will come when a lot of these brands understand the importance of having this kind of membership. Let's assume that we have some businesses that after our discussion are inspired to um, start something and to start to mm -hmm. bring community in place. So what would be your advice to such a businesses that are trying to start the community? For starting a community, the most important part for me is to have a solid foundation of members that we already talked about. You will see that there are some members that are standing out and they are engaging more and they are really interested on that. And that's the kind of members that you want on your team. So you can give them a special role, like a moderators for specific channels, something very interesting. I prefer always do that instead of hiring someone from outside because you can, that they are engaging with your product and you know, they are going to do a great job and you can teach them after a few things. So this is my first recommendation over deliver, not over promise. It's you have to try to give them more than they are expecting. You will keep the community engaged for more time in the long term. You will also have to adapt and the ability to adapt and always focus on bringing more value and rewarding them in different ways. You can start with a couple of channels. I saw this is a very big mistake that I'm always seeing that there are many communities that start with a lot of channels, a lot of bots in Discord when they have 100 members. And you can feel that you are completely overwhelmed because you see a lot of channels. You don't know from where to start. And if you're having 100 members, 1000 members, most of these channels will be, is going to be empty. So just grow a line with the kind of use, with the number of users you are, you're having okay? and grow accordingly. And if you don't have enough budget, I will start doing some partnerships with communities with the same vision or similar vision as you and try to bring members from them, like from there to your community. And maybe some small influencer. This is if you don't have budget. If you have, obviously, 
start implementing other strategies like more influencers and paid ads and press releases and all of these things. But yeah, this is the first step that I will that I would really recommend and have someone that exactly knows how to talk with crypto members. This skill is, I would say, crucial. And there are not many people that are able to know this niche language of the crypto. So without it, as you mentioned, it will be challenging to build trust in, in the community that people behind the project know that they're, what they're talking about. And you've mentioned about the giving role of moderator for some people from the community, not like inside the team. This is a good step. But also what we need to be aware, and I've even seen one project on, in, in my own experience where it turned out to really bad, meaning that the team give moderator permissions to member of community, which then moderator have permission to post on official channel. And at the end of the day, he provided phishing link to the minting page. So the whole community was thinking that, okay, this is moderator, this is official mm -hmm. channel, so I can go safely to this link and do a transaction and so on. But it turned out that it was a scam and it turned out really bad. So we need to be really cautious around who are we giving permissions to, because at the end of the day, we can even kill our project because of such a small mistake, mm -hmm. let's call it like that. So maybe yeah, let's yeah. start this topic. Are there like any risks or traps that are waiting for us in terms of community, either from this like technical perspective or operational, like what we need to be aware of? From my perspective, you always have to be aware about the, the environment you are creating from the beginning, because this is how the next followers are going to be. So if you are creating this environment with harassment or people, as we talk, talking about the token, it's not the kind of environment that you want, you should cut off from the beginning and remove these, these people. I know it's difficult. You don't want to ban anyone, but you have to keep your community clean. And this is very important. And also most important part in the beginning, because after you will have moderators and you can hire someone else and whatever, but at the beginning it's very important to keep this community clean. So besides that, the most biggest risk is having these bad members on your community that can create this distortion. Fighting with bad actors, it's number one job in each one of the role in terms of the crypto economic systems. So for example, from our point of view, when we are creating the economies for crypto economic systems, I think with bad actors is number one priority. So design the system that will be cyber resistant. And also from community perspective, I would say it's the same, which is okay. Make sure that the bad actors will not take over and they will not harm the good part of the community, which is, I think, universal problem across many of the fields in a web free space, which is sad, but this is how it is. And we need to acknowledge that and be prepared for that. So that's why you listener, if you are listening to us, that's why you need to talk with people that are experienced in a field and don't underestimate whatever the field is, because as you can see, it doesn't matter. Is it your economic side of the project? Is it your community side of the project? There are risks everywhere. So without the practical experience and knowledge, you can fall into a trap really easily. Let's talk about the future, Javier. Can you talk about any trends you are seeing in the web free space in terms of community building? What's coming there? This trend that you will probably already know about it, but ChatGPT is an amazing tool and everyone is now is using the AI for everything. And that's why a lot of platforms related with community growth are using AI now on, on there, like using the API of Chatty or whatever. So I think we are going to have a lot of more platforms, more native platforms where you can connect the, your MetaMask, your wallet very easily. And because this course, you can do that and you can use a different um, robots or Calaplan or these things, but you don't have a very good one platform. So I think we will have some of them very good ones and it's going to also remove a lot of barriers for the web two users. So ChatGPT AI, I'm always every day using this. 
So I think it's one of the trends that community will start using this. Also, it's something that happened before, but I think it's going to continue increasing, is the spaces, like Twitter spaces, like the, form, the audio format, okay? Reddit live talks or the Discord lives. People can engage with the founders, with the team in a more real way. So this is something that all of the communities will continue using. And another thing that I'm seeing is that I'm seeing a lot of marketers also in LinkedIn that it wasn't their field before. They were marketers from another side and now they are turning in community growth and they are posting about community growth. So I think we are going to have more specialized people, or specialized marketers on community because I think everyone is seeing the real importance and in my opinion, at the end, all of the projects in the future, the Web3 projects, will have their own community and their own Discord server or their own channel to talk. I'm pretty sure about that. That sounds exciting. For sure, AI, I think right now is taking over all of the places and all of the industries and people around the world with different fields, they're trying to figure out, okay, how I can leverage that. So for sure, community will be one of them. And also, as you mentioned, I can see the trend of tools tailored for community building, the platform for community builders, and just to acquire, engage, monetize the community that you have outside, for example, of Discord. So this is already happening for sure. And I also think this can be something that will grow even more in the future. Cool. Javier, thanks for taking the time to be here and for sharing your expertise with us. It was really great to have you here and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you so much. Really a very good podcast. Thank you for the invite. That's great. And you listener, if you are interested in staying up to date on all things web free, be sure to subscribe to our podcast to never miss an episode. We cover a range of topics and have a diverse lineup of guests who are experts in their field. So hit that subscribe button and join us on our journey as we explore the exciting world of Web3. Thanks for tuning in.